We got a comment on one of our videos asking when you should pause keywords in search campaigns. Now, while I would like to be able to give you a really easy answer that keeps this video maybe only 30 seconds long, that's simply not possible. There are too many factors that go into deciding if a keyword is worth fighting for and trying to improve performance, or if you should just cut your ties and pause it. So in this video, I want to go through some of those considerations and the things that we think about when we're analyzing keyword performance, some of the optimizations we might make to improve it, and then talk about how we might eventually decide to pause individual keywords. That way you can start applying that framework to your accounts. So because this topic is a little bit higher level, more in the strategy realm, I'm going to spend the entire time in PowerPoint. We're not going to be in an account today. I will do my best to try and use examples to illustrate what different strategy pieces we're talking about here. But for the most part, it doesn't really make sense to hop into an account because the numbers are going to be so different for every account that you have that it doesn't really make sense to look at just one of the ones that we have in place. Anytime that you're analyzing performance for keywords, they're really going to kind of fit into a few different categories. They're either going to be profitable, not profitable, or unclear or borderline. This covers pretty much soup to nuts, all the different ways that keywords can perform. And depending on how each keyword is doing and which category it falls in, there are different actions for you to take. Now, obviously the first one being profitable, this one's pretty easy, right? We're already hitting all the performance targets that we have. We clearly don't want to pause this. So the only real suggestions that we have here are going to be to look for ways to increase the volume. Can we get more volume out of this individual keyword? Can we look to conduct additional keyword research and find new phrases based on this original keyword that can help extend our account that could also potentially be profitable? Or does it make sense to expand our geography or reach into a different market to grow the impact that this keyword is having on our account? Obviously, profitable keywords are not the main focus of this video today, but I did want to give just a little bit of insight because that is a category of keyword performance that you could have in your account. Now, the other two performance categories, not profitable and unclear and borderline, I'm going to treat as one group because just because something is not profitable or it's unclear or it's borderline doesn't mean that categorically every time you need to pause it or optimize for it. There are a number of different steps we go to to figure out which action needs to be taken for any given keyword. So the first thing I want to do is define the type of keywords that fall into this group. Clearly, these are keywords that are falling short of the performance benchmarks that we have in place, but you might be surprised to see the different ranges that I have here. For keywords with a CPA target, I really only focus on those that have a CPA that is two to three times the goal that we have in the account. Example, if you have a $100 cost per lead goal and your CPA is in the 150 range, I'm probably not going to worry about that too terribly much, depending on how much volume you have, because odds are you have some keywords that are below that $100 target that are helping to balance out. It's really once keywords start to get up into that 200 to 300 dollar cost per lead range that I start to worry a little bit and think that it might be time to pause that keyword. Something similar is true for a ROAS target. Again, let's say we have a 300% ROAS goal. If we're only at 150 or 200%, I'm probably going to start paying attention to that a little bit more closely than something that's closer to 275, something along those lines. There needs to be some level of leniency around your cost per lead goal. So usually I give a little bit of a buffer. So this hopefully gives you a range of kind of what we're normally looking at. We're not going to take an account that has a $100 cost per lead goal and a keyword that has a $101 cost per lead and start thinking about pausing that keyword. It's just too close to the goal and it doesn't make sense to turn it off for that one additional dollar cost per lead. The other thing that you need to keep in mind, and this happens a lot with accounts with low conversion volume, is that each keyword really needs to have spent enough money to have converted at least once before you think about turning it off. This always ends up being a function of the cost per lead goal for me, or in an e-commerce account, you can end up utilizing your average order value and trying to back into what your ROAS target would be for that sale if you made that sale with an average order value in that moment. So if an account has a cost per lead goal of $250, I usually try and give a rough range that that keyword needs to have spent $500 in its lifetime before we think about pausing it. Because anything that it ends up converting, even if it's spent $250, if it's spent $300, if it's spent $400, if it converts once, 
the cost per lead is still not two times the target goal that we have in the account. So even if something hasn't converted and it's spent money, it doesn't necessarily mean that it needs to be turned off just yet. Now I recognize that that's not always something that business owners or clients want to hear, but that is in my mind, the right objective way to go about evaluating a keyword's long-term performance potential. If you don't have the budget to support a number of keywords not converting for a while while they get up to that two times conversion lead goal, then maybe you pause them for a little bit, let some other keywords run, then depending on their performance, maybe pause them, reactivate these other keywords and give them another shot to perform. But I wouldn't just categorically turn things off because they have spent some money and not converted without having that minimum level of spend in their lifetime. So if your keywords have met the spend minimums, now we need to start thinking about what next steps are to determine if they need to be paused or optimized. And when it comes down to it, it doesn't matter if a keyword is highly unprofitable, that's unclear or borderline, but we really need to have further investigation to figure out what needs to happen. So the first thing I want you to do is extend your date range. Are you looking at only a recent snapshot of performance or have you looked over a longer period of time? Have you looked at the past seven days, 30 days, 90, 180? What are the different performance trends that you see here? Has that keyword ever been profitable on any level of spend or has it always been unprofitable? And how unprofitable has it been? Has it always been at three times the cost per lead goal? Or at one point, was it only at maybe one and a half times the cost per lead goal where it was a lot more efficient, but it was still a little bit higher than we wanted it to be? Can you determine any of the factors that have changed since it was profitable, if it was, or at least close to it? Is there anything that stands out to you? Are there any seasonality trends that we need to keep in mind that you might be analyzing performance right now a little bit more harshly than you would if you looked at a long-term table where performance might improve because of those seasonality trends? Depending on what you find here, there's really two different paths that we can go. For keywords that are never profitable, there's only one additional thing that I try and keep in mind before pausing these keywords. And that's to ask if this keyword is a loss leader. In a number of different accounts, there are some keywords that for whatever reason are not by themselves profitable, but when you turn them off, you notice that the overall impact on the business is greater than what the performance numbers were in the channel. Let's say you usually get 10 conversions off of a keyword a month, but you notice when you turn that keyword off, you actually end up losing 20, 30 sales over the course of a month because that keyword wasn't active. It's not really an exact science, but doing some form of on and off testing can help you see how this impacts the business. You've had it on for a little while, you're thinking about turning it off. So set a timetable, whether it's one week, two weeks, a month, turn that keyword off and see how the business is impacted overall. Was this a positive change or a negative change? There are many different e-commerce accounts that I have run on that have a marquee product that lots of people come to them for. And that product keyword itself is not profitable, but the number of returning customers that we get off of the people who came through that keyword initially outweighs the original poor return on ad spend performance of that keyword on that first customer acquisition. So it really makes sense to keep it on. And we just know that that keyword needs to have its own different ROAS target compared to the rest of the account. Now a loss leader is not something that happens in every account. You might not have something that falls into the term of a loss leader. And if you don't, or if you turn off this keyword in that on off test and you find that the impact to the business was negligible and it didn't hurt you to have the keyword turned off, it's probably best to make sure that it's just paused and you don't need to have it impacting the account moving forward. But if you do have loss leaders or you find out through this on off testing that having that keyword paused negatively impacts the business greater than what it does when the keyword is on, probably best to leave it on and readjust your expectations of that keyword by itself. But what if your keywords are at least sometimes profitable? What can we do to improve the performance of keywords that have been profitable in the past or have potential to improve performance now? The first thing we usually dive into here is going to be search query analysis. Are there negative keywords that you need to add because they're dragging down the performance? Whether they're relevant or not, if they're not performing, you probably need to get them out of there. But an additional piece to that that is a little more nuanced is has the query strength changed over time. If your keyword used to be profitable, but no longer is, 
Has there been a trend in the search queries away from what is more relevant to your business? And maybe this keyword doesn't quite mean what it used to mean in the past, or the algorithm is starting to associate it with different intent. There could be some adjustments you need to make there as well. And then the last thing that accounts that have been running for a while usually get overlooked. Have you added all of the top converting search queries as target keywords elsewhere in the account? If you regularly analyze search query reports and add strong performing queries as keywords in your account, odds are you're taking those away from this individual keyword and making it less effective. That's not a bad thing. It's just a change in how this keyword is being utilized. It's no longer matching to those converting queries because those are matching to keywords that are now in your account. But that means that the different available queries this keyword has to match to are more narrow and they might not be as highly qualified. So there is a scenario where you've effectively culled all of the available performance out of this keyword. And now it needs to be paused because the remaining queries coming through are not nearly as targeted. But if you can still add some negative keywords, focus on some higher relevancy queries, it could make more sense for you to just keep this keyword active for a little bit and see if you can improve performance through search query analysis. Now in the same vein of trying to focus on the relevancy of queries, I also want to talk about keyword match types. These have changed quite a bit over the past few years. And again, depending on how long your account's been running, maybe you need to revisit your keyword match type strategy. Are you using all broad phrase and exact match terms or just a couple? Have you analyzed the performance recently with all of those changes and seeing how each one of them is performing? And do you need to adjust? I'm not gonna go too far into this because we do have a video that covers the Google Ads keyword match types that was launched just in the middle of 2022. So it's still relatively recent depending on when you're watching this video. So go give that a watch and see if maybe keyword match types need to be adjusted to improve the performance and the query relevancy of your keyword. Now beyond the keywords and the queries themselves, if your keyword used to be profitable in the past, but no longer is, have you changed your messaging in your ad copy or on your landing pages? Or have you changed the call to action associated with that keyword that could be the cause of declines in performance? In a number of different accounts I've managed in the past, the businesses have almost refused to look inward and see that the changes that they made that were a business decision one way or another, have had a negative impact on the account. In a number of different areas, we've had people try to change the call to action from maybe a content download to a demo request. And then they wonder why those keywords aren't performing as well. Or in a number of different areas, you've changed your brand messaging. And unfortunately, it happens more often than it should, but brands get less specific with their brand messaging. They end up using maybe more words, maybe bigger words, but somehow saying less. We all know what those are. You end up using buzzwords like synergy and all that sort of thing. And you end up not actually conveying the main points of your business to your end customer and making everything from your keywords to your ad copy to your landing pages less impactful than they used to be. So if you notice that over time, performance has been declining and you've noticed that you've made changes during those periods of time to your messaging, landing pages, or calls to action, it might make sense to revisit those previous strategies and try and revive the performance or at least confirm that that change is what caused the decline in performance. If you reintroduce an old call to action and performance jumps right back up to where it used to be, odds are that's probably the issue that you're having. It's not a keyword issue. It's not a search query issue. It might be that call to action. So this probably wouldn't be a good keyword to pause. You just need to decide if that was the right call to action change for your business overall. Next is going to be bidding strategies. Are you using manual or automated bidding? And depending on which one you're using, would it make sense to use the other? If you're using manual bidding, are there bid modifiers you can make to impact performance? If your search queries and your keyword match types are strong and ads and landing pages and calls to action are good, maybe you need to look in and see if performance is poor over the weekend or if certain audiences aren't doing well, or maybe your mobile experience isn't very good. Can you adjust some of those bid modifiers there? Or if you're using automated bidding, do you have enough conversions coming through to support that automated bidding strategy? And are your settings right for the amount of volume that you're getting? In the same vein as the keyword match types, I'm not gonna go too far in depth on this because you can check out this Google Ads bidding strategies video that'll talk about all of these different insights 
and how to get the most out of the automated bidding strategies. But again, don't think that a keyword's performance is a result just of that keyword. There could be a lot of outside factors. And the most outside factor of all are your competitors. Have new competitors entered the market? Are you losing ground to other competitors who have been there over the course of time and maybe they're just getting more aggressive? What are those trends? And do you need to reset expectations on any given keyword because that market has just gotten so much more competitive? An example I'll use here is one that I think everybody can relate to. Let's talk about meal kits. You know, those things that there's always ads for on podcasts and all you have to do is send in your meal preferences and they'll send you a whole bunch of groceries and some recipes so you can make meals for yourself, four people, 10 people over the course of a week. Those didn't used to exist. So at some point when meal kits were invented, those keywords would have been extremely cheap. Whoever first got into the market with that, and I don't know which brand it was, they would have enjoyed a very low competitive space because they were the only ones doing what they were doing. But over time, there's now five, 10, 15, 20. It seems like there's a meal kit company for every individual diet and geography out there. Now those are a lot more competitive spaces. Does that mean that those keywords are not valuable anymore just because the cost per acquisition is probably much higher? No, it just means that the market is that much more competitive that your goals and expectations probably need to change. If you're curious in finding out who your competitors are and finding longer term trends, we again have another video that shows you how to use the auction insights report in Google ads to see who your competitors are, which metrics they're beating you on, where you're beating them, and trying to understand how they're impacting you over time. Now, assuming that you have gone through all of this and you've decided that rather than pausing a keyword, you want to try and test improving the performance of it before you do that, it's important for you to set timelines for your turnaround. How long are you going to give this keyword to perform before you decide to eventually pause it? Just like with the spend metric on a keyword that has not converted, my only caution to you is to not set a timetable that's too short. You need to have something that you're comfortable with testing, but it needs to be realistic to gather enough data. If your target cost per lead goal in your account is $100 and that keyword only spends $50 on average, a one week timeline test is not long enough you need to have something that's going to be at least two weeks, if not a month or a month and a half to try and determine if your optimizations can turn performance around well enough for you to keep that keyword active. Now, I know I've spent a lot of time talking about things you can do to avoid pausing a keyword, and I'm sure Google really, really loves that. But when it comes down to it, these are all of the stages that Joe and I will go through to try and determine if a keyword simply isn't performing or if we have some additional performance adjustments we can make, whether it's through search queries, keyword match types, if there needs to be a change in our messaging and how we present ourselves with ad copy, landing pages, and the call to action that we offer, or if we need to understand the market a little bit better and realize that maybe we're just in a more competitive space than we used to be and our expectations need to change a little bit. But if you've gone through all of those and your performance can't be improved through search queries and match types, your messaging is on point and there's no other call to action you can use for your brand, and maybe your competitors are just really, really competitive, probably time to pause that keyword. The only reason we go through as many steps as we do before pausing is because you added that keyword for a reason. You think it's relevant and it can generate performance for you. So it's in your best interest to at least do your due diligence and determine if that keyword can be viable through these different stages. But if you get to the end of this exercise and you realize that it's just not the right fit, then it's time to turn it off, look elsewhere, and put your efforts into other keywords that can get you better performance on a more consistent basis. Like I said, this video is a lot more high level strategy focused rather than in the weeds in the account, but hopefully you still found it helpful to walk through these different considerations before pausing a keyword. If there's anything that you have a specific question about pausing keywords, or if you liked this format of higher level strategy as opposed to the how to in the account, we would love to hear about either of those in the comments below. Thanks for watching our video. If you thought it was useful, give us a thumbs up below. We release a new video at least once a week. So if you want to get notified of when a new one comes out, be sure to subscribe to the Paid Media Pros channel.